What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone Light. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode... Stop hitting F5 so many times. Last episode, we had created ourselves some cosmic meatballs. That's right. So we went through the whole process of getting the meat ingots and all of that stuff. Uh, we are still missing the other item that goes here, the ultimate stew. And we are also missing a Emerald Singularity. Now I went and I looked how many singular or how many of the emerald blocks we needed to create that singularity, and it was like eight thousand more. But the problem is we are running low on nether stars. Then I decided to take a look at our ME system here for emeralds, and we had eleven thousand blocks. Well, you can see we have far fewer emerald blocks in our system now. I took a lot of those out of here, and I was able to put it into our neutronium compressor, and you can see here that we have one emerald block remaining for a singularity, and there it is. So now we have that done. Now I still wanted to check out RF tools and see if we can make ourselves an emerald dimension. That way, if we need large amounts of EMC for things later on, we'll definitely be able to do that and not have to worry about our nether star collection. So we're up to 4,118 of these things but we're getting, we're getting them decently fast. We're not getting them really fast. And I honestly don't know how fast or how much EMC we're going to need. So I definitely want to take a look at getting this RF tools dimension set up. Now I was just taking a little bit of time here and I went and explored the nether kind of what I did is I grabbed our digital miner and I set it down in the nether. And then I was trying to figure out how to do an item stack or I guess an item Whoops, wrong button. Uh, let's see, configuration. Trying to get the dimensional shard ore in here. Now, let me back up one second. So we want to do RF tools, and we want to change the terrain to flat. There's two options. We have void, and we have flat. The flat one requires us to have these dimlet templates, right? And those require dimensional shards. So I went to the nether to see if we could find any dimensional shard ore. Let's also look here. Dimensional shards. So you can see there's three different flavors. We have overworld variety, nether variety, and end variety. So I went to the nether to see if I could find this. And this is just called RF tools colon dimensional underscore shard underscore or, right? So I tried putting in the item filter, the, the uh, or dictionary filter. I couldn't find any there. So then I also saw there's end version and I went to the end and I tried searching there again. I couldn't find any. So I'm not so sure that that stuff even spawns at all. Yeah. So, uh, I think that's going to be a no go. I think in order for us to get dimensional shard or to make flat terrain, we're going to have to make void worlds, hopefully get some kind of terrain that spawns in there like spheres or tendrils or whatever that the RF tools buildings appear on and just keep looting those buildings until we get the dimlets that we need in order to make a proper world. I think that's the way we're going to have to go with that. Anyway, there is our Emerald Singularity. So if we're going to start looking at RF tools dimensions, uh, let's go ahead and start looking at it. <laughs> that's what we need to do if we're going to start looking at it, right? So RF tools, we need to get ourselves a dimensional builder, dimension inscriber, dimension builder, well, not so much the editor. These are the two important pieces here. So let's take a look here. I never made any of that stuff, just double checking. Sometimes I make things and completely forget about them. So we have everything except for the machine frame and those are EMC able. So we should probably take one and learn it for later. Right? So we have that. I believe you can put that in the center and that will show you items around the same EMC value as how that works. I'm not entirely sure how that happens or maybe it shows you that value and then everything that's slightly lower than that price. Anyway, so we can pull out a few of those machine frames here. So now we have four of them. Cool. Not like they were super expensive. We could have just crafted them, but you know. So anyway, there's a dimension builder and then we need a dimension inscriber. Easy. Both of those things. Uh, let's see what else we're going to need a dialing device. Let's spell it right. Dialing device. This is how we call the world. Once we have a world made, then we're going to need a matter receiver and a matter transmitter. Both of these guys are important and we're out of the machine frame. So let's grab a few more. Okay. So that was the transmitter. We're going to need a receiver. There we go. 
I believe that's all we need in order to get going. Why is there a little blue circle spinny thing? I don't know. On <laughs> my mouse cursor. All right. Okay. So th then let's see. What else are we going to need here? There is the... I can never remember the name of it. There's a little purple thing. This guy, the phased field generator. This thing protects you in case you go into a world that loses power or something happens. Uh, I guess we can't make that yet until we get dimensional shard or so until we get this, it is possible for us to die in these dimensions, even with our overpowered armor. I'm not sure if the Avaridia armor would protect you from that. I've never tried, but yeah, just a thing to think about. So we need these empty dimension tabs. Now those things are EMCable. So let's go ahead and make sure we learn those as well. And we'll just pull out uh, 16. That should be more than plenty. Cool. All right. So now we need to place these devices somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. How about over here? We could put them in the wall. I've been kind of thinking we should use these walls for something, but we are going to need a matter receiver and a matter transmitter somewhere. So I'll put the transmitter on this side. Actually, I don't think we need the receiver since we have this guy, our advanced dislocator. We can always work back here, but might as well just put them both down. Okay, so we got that and that, and this is the exact center, it looks like. So we can put our, our dialing device here, maybe? Or do we want the dimension builder here? I'm not sure. Maybe put that there. This is the transmitter, so this is where we want our dialing device. And then on this side, I guess we'll put our dimension inscriber um, next to the receiver. Okay, so there's our machines. We have to power those. They aren't ready to go just yet. Um, easy for us to do though. We have the wireless power. Now some dimensions that we make might require more power than what the wireless can give us. Mm, do we want to use that one or do we want to use the one that's over here? Maybe we'll switch over to this one. This one was pretty much only for Pretty much only for these guys over here but that's pretty close to these and i know we've been using a lot of connections on the one down there anyway so let's just go ahead and click these not a valid device oh oh it won't let us use these at all okay well never mind i'm very surprised i didn't know that rf tools was not compatible with the draconic evolution wireless energy so another option we have let's go ahead and pop these out here all right, so we'll do conduit. The ender conduit should be fine. Hopefully this should transfer about a hundred thousand RF per tick. Yeah, 900 or 99,999. So that doesn't require power. Let me just go ahead and undo that portion of this. We'll replace that back with the lime concrete. And then over here, we will have to connect that up to power somehow. And then also we're going to want some conduit facades. So we had some here. Those are only 24 EMC. That's rather inexpensive. Now, does that come out the lime color? No, it's unpainted ones. Okay, well, let's just grab some of those. That should be fine. Then we will go ahead and paint those. All right, so we need to go downstairs, give it some of the lime color. This guy, we already have lime in there. Perfect. We'll just go ahead and cook up a stack of those. That should be more than enough. We'll just leave the rest of those in there for now. All right, cool. And then we can just cover this all up. Now, both the matter transmitter and the receiver require power too. So we'll have to make sure we give those power uh, so they can do their thing. Uh, so let's see back here. If we look at the back of this, we need a way for us to get power over here. And yeah, power is right there. So I guess we'll just use a quantum and tango little porter here one of these guys, or maybe we could just use the IO receivers. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, we'll just put this here for now. And then, you know, the power is in this. I'll place this right here. Okay. So we'll say private reactor power set. We'll go to the energy config and say auto eject on. So these things should be getting power and they are not. So why would they not be getting power? The reactor power, private, set. Oh, I got to set those all output. Now they should be getting power. Still not getting power. Okay. <laughs> Why are you not getting power? That is connected. Energy. 
Oh, was it not on the energy before? Aha, there we go. I must have been on the wrong one. So now they are, in fact, for sure, 100%, no questions asked, getting power. That is going to hold a lot. That's 300 million RF, goodness. Now, these don't hold quite as much. And then, again, both of these machines down here need power as well. So I'll go ahead and run some uh, conduit between these guys here. And then up to the bottom of this guy. Perfect. Okay, so now everything should be good and juiced up. Yep, yeah, that's going to work just fine. Okay, cool. So now that we got that whole thing <laughs> figured out, we can start looking at making ourselves some dimensions here. Let's go ahead and button that up a little bit more. Okay, so that doesn't look so bad, right? So we need to get ourselves a dimension. Now, another thing is if we make ourselves a random world and somebody else has already made themselves a random world, we're gonna go to that random world that somebody else has already generated. So in order to avoid that, we need to get ourselves digits and we have to inscribe our world with these different digit ones. Now I do believe you only craft the digit zero and then you can put those in your crafting grid. You put the zero in here and that gives you a one. You put the one in here, that gives you a two and you go all the way up to nine. So you can make zero through nine with one of those or you can do zero, zero through nine, nine with two of them, etc. right? That makes it all the dimensions unique. Okay, so we need to make a bunch of these things, and this is EMCable, which will make life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and craft up a zero, and then we will learn how to make that and make a whole lot of zeros. This goes there, learned, boom. Many stacks of iron ingots, whoops. <laughs> okay, so now we have a whole lot of zeros. Oh, that says digit null. This dimlet is blacklisted, what? Okay, so that doesn't work. I thought it was going to work. Doesn't work. We'll just go ahead and reclaim the EMC off that. Right, so I guess in order to do this, we're just going to have to really craft all of these. Well, there's 54 of them. Okay, well, <laughs> anyway, I thought we'd get something going here. So let's start off. We'll start all with ones, and then we'll change the other half of those. Let's do like, I don't know, maybe up to 20 dimensions. So we're going to start off with key one. Actually, you know what? We should probably go higher because who knows uh, what the numbers are people have used. So let's start with the 30. So we go three, one, and then we'll do three, two, three, three, et cetera. Okay, so that should be fine. So let's start over here, dimension inscriber. We have to put in an empty dimension tab. Then we have to put in the key three, one, right? So when we make this thing, it'll say that it has those keys. We'll just call this 31 store so this will be a random dimension it says digits 31 on there the name is 31 all we have to do is put this over here in our dimension builder which will use a little bit of power charge this thing up um you know realize the dimension and then it needs to power up and looks like that powered up right away yeah so it only uses 10 rf per tick cool all right so now we have to use our dialing device here so we should probably give this a name is there a way for us to name this thing? Do we have to like shift right click on it? Right. Oh, you know what? I think we named this thing. So this was called uh hypno transmitter. And we'll call that private. And then this one will be hypno receiver. We'll call that one private as well. Okay. So now we come over here into the dialing device. We can see we want to go from the hypno transmitter to 31. So that says ID 10. And oh, a rabbit desert. Okay. Anyway, let's just dial. No access to transmitter. No access to transmitter. Does this have to be touching the transmitter? Does the transmitter have to be up one block? I don't recall that ever being an issue before. Okay, well, let me break the dialing device. If I set it there, does that work? No access to transmitter. Try again, this one to this one, dial. Okay, I think the problem might be that I set this thing to be private. Let me try setting these to public just so there's no more issue here. Transmitter this one. Okay, well that works. Uh, so I guess the dialing device doesn't have to be there. I'm not sure why the private isn't working like that. 
Let me just go ahead and make sure we set these things again. So it says that it's fine. All right, so let's go ahead and go to this dimension. Hopefully nothing bad happens. It says everything should be powered. Starting teleportation. Okay, so we got land. That's a thing. So we should be able to find the dimensional shard ore here. I wonder, can we use... Yeah, I guess we don't need to find the entry point. Let's try and use our digital miner here. Maybe we'll be able to find it. Maybe it only spawns in this world and I was doing it right before, but I just couldn't find any. I'm not sure. So if we go to configure new filter material, no, I'm sorry. We want to go to or dictionary and we do dimensional. Yeah, it just doesn't find it. So you might not be able to use this thing. You, it might be one that you have to do the item stack. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. But what is this right here? Is that what we're looking for? No, that's sir. It is. Okay, well, I guess what we need to do is kind of fly around for a little while, see if we can find the ore. I'm not sure if it only spawns at a certain Y level or how that works. It would be nice if we had Silk Touch. We don't have Silk Touch on this, right? When you Apparently on the new versions of Draconic Evolution, we put Silk Touch on here. You'll get another button that says Enable or Disable Silk Touch. So, yeah, I guess we don't have that on here. Hmm. Okay, so I don't... I think it spawns on the surface, but it might. I know for sure if you dig underground, you can find it. And then this will also be helpful for trying to find these kinds of things too. So let's see what we find in here. We got ourselves Forest Hill, Mesa, and Mesa. So we can choose those biomes if we want to make new ones. Uh, controller Dimlet Magical. And then we have a cave feature and then some Dimlet parts. Well, now that we have our wireless crafting terminal on us, we can take all those and send them all back, right? I guess I didn't need to do the digit ones, but yeah, this world is going to be just fine. So hopefully we'll be able to find what we're looking for here, that dimensional shard ore, then we can use our digital miner to collect a whole lot of it. So I guess I'm going to go underground, try and do some digging here and see if we can find some. So if we do go mining and we're trying to find the dimensional shard ore, we definitely need the ore itself. So I went to go search our system for Silk Touch. Turns out we had an enchanted plate in the system with Silk Touch on it. And then I looked in the hopper below our printing press here. And that already made extra Silk Touches. We have Sharpness and Mending too. I guess we could add those onto this as well. Should we choose to? Mending, not really important. But yeah, Sharpness 5, Silk Touch. That should be good. Do we have Fortune as well? Let's take a look. Fortune. Oh, is that this book? Right here. So yeah, we have Fortune 3 and Looting 2. This is another thing that I was kind of curious. Can we duplicate these books on this thing? Does that even work? I don't know. Uh, let's look. Uh, if I do glasses, let's just see if it will tell me how much that costs. 55 levels. I don't think I've ever seen one cost 55 levels before. So I got a good feeling that's going to work. Let's go all the way down here. And let me just grab one level. Okay, so we have enough levels on us. All right, so let us go ahead and copy that. So that is Fortune 3 and Looting 2. And I almost wonder, can we take these and then enchant them with another book? Like, is that even possible? I've never messed around with these plates too much. So if I go down here and I put this here and this here. No, that does not appear to work. What about... Well, I guess we wouldn't be able to do that either. Okay. Well, I was just kind of curious how this worked. So if we can duplicate Fortune 3 and Looting 2, uh, does that mean that we can make two of those books and then copy them and then put them together on an anvil to increase their level? I honestly don't know how any of that works. So we get one book. Okay, cool. So that works. Let me grab the cheese. And then auto repairs in my inventory because of our cheaty thing of cheatiness right here, repaired talisman. All right, so that should be copying another book. Okay, now we have two of them. Let me grab that back. And that repairs up once again. Are we out of ink? And we have 45 ink, we have four books. It seemed like it stopped though before I pulled that thing out. So I'm not sure why I did that. Anyway, so here is two of those. Let's go see if we can combine those together and then put them on our staff of power here. So if we do this book plus this book, 
Oh yeah, so that turns into fortune three and looting three. So that's really good. Let me grab the levels required. That is far too many, it was 14. 15 is fine, whatever. So that plus this together makes the fortune three looting three. And that's gonna be good enough. Okay, and then we can also put sharpness on there too, I suppose, why not? So that costs eight levels. This one, this one. Cool. So now we have all of those together. And grab a few more. So if I want to put those onto our staff of power here, that costs 24 levels. I'm one level shy. That, that, there we go. Okay. So let's check this out. If we go to the staff of power here, it does not show us the button. Maybe that's in the newer versions. Or did we not? Oh, we didn't even put silk touch on there. Uh, let me put silk touch on there and see what happens then. So that's 17 levels. That doesn't show that we can put Silk Touch on there, does it? Fortune Looting Sharpness. Okay, uh, maybe I'm thinking of a newer version of Draconic Evolution. Maybe that isn't a part of this one. Okay, well, that is unfortunate. So we need to get that Fortune 3 author so we can put Silk Touch on. Hmm. Do we have a disenchanter that we can use? Let's take a look here. I know we have one in MFR. Right, so we have the disenchanter from Draconic Evolution that we can use, and we also have one from MFR. I think that requires the mob juice. This one might be the better option. So let's see if we can craft this one up real quick. All right, so we need to get ourselves this and then two enchanted books. Do we have books in here? We have enchanted books. Uh, maybe here, did I learn books this way? We have the written book. All right, so let's make one book. We'll EMC those. <laughs> book, this, one of those. I guess we'll do it this way. Cool. All right, let's learn that. Make a stack of them. Okay, so there we go. Now we have the books. Now we can make ourselves the three bookshelves that we need. Those are EMCable as well. We'll maybe look at that later. All right, so we have the bookshelves, enchantment table. Did we already have the bookshelves in there? I think we might have had those in there. I think I thought the bookshelves went up here. Anyway, so let's just go ahead and continue making this. So we need two enchanted books and then a draconic core. Draconic core, make one of those. Guess we should put that in there right away. And then the book. So we have lots of enchanted books. We'll just use those. Okay, so there's a disenchanter. So I don't remember how this disenchanter works. We'll stick it over here though. So we do this plus a book and then we extract it. I guess it doesn't require power. Oh, uh, I guess we want fortune three out there. And I think that's saying that it costs 20 levels. Is that how that works? I don't remember using this thing recently. Yeah, so let's try that. 20 levels now. Extract Fortune 3. Okay, so now if I want to put Silk Touch on there, is it going to let me? Hopefully it does. Because if we can't put Silk Touch on this, then that's going to be a problem. Yeah, it still doesn't say Silk Touch, does it? Well, it turns out that you can't put Silk Touch on the Draconic Staff of Power if you already have Fortune on there or Looting or whatever. What was the other book that we had on there? I don't even know. Anyway, so I took those off. Yeah, I guess it was Fortune or Looting. I took that off and the Silk Touch was able to appear here. So I just turned this thing up to 11 by 11 by 11. So this thing can wreck everything. So we'll be collecting all the different ores here. And it looks like it drops them all into like a little ball of some description. I don't know if I've seen that before. So that's kind of cool. So now that we went ahead and we ate or we used all of our food, <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, eat. Yeah, we're not going to be taking hunger damage because we do have that ring from Batania. So let's put away all the, all the stone, the dirt, these different things. We're looking for that dimensional shard or... And I don't know if we collected it or not. It's kind of hard to tell if we got them, right? Uh, this, put away all these different ores, I suppose. Yeah, I'm not seeing the dimensional shard or... Okay, well, we wrecked a whole lot of the world here. Let's continue on, see if we can find it. Oh, there it is. Exotic miner achievement get. 
Cool. So now we have one dimensional shard ore. Let's go ahead and clean up the rest of our inventory here. And that is a lot of blocks we remove with one click, isn't it? Let's go ahead and calm this down a little bit. So the dig AOE, we'll go and put on one point or one to one and then dig depth. We'll put down to one that way we're only or zero. So we're only destroying one block at a time. All right. So now that we have that ore, we should be able to use the digital miner and use the filter on it. Uh, where did we jump down from over here? Okay. So we'll once again, try our digital miner. Place that there, config, new filter, item stack, this guy. Now it knows about that. So we'll save that in there. Now we have that as a filter. Uh, so we have max 128, radius 32. We are currently at 137. That should be fine. Uh, we do want a quantum entangle porter. Let us grab, I feel like I had one on me. No, I guess we used it in the base. So I thought we had four in there. We only had three now. So we'll set that. We will do energy output to all the different sides. This thing has power Start it up. So this is finding industrial grade graphite ore. Did that not send power energy output? I wonder why that's not sending power over here. Like we had enough power for a little bit. It ran out. Let me try breaking this and sending it back again. Private react power set. Energy set to output on all the sides. Auto eject. Is that what it is? Okay. So now we're finding both the industrial grade graphite ore and the dimensional shard ores. So we'll just go ahead and try and collect all of these. When I can't find any more, I'll fly around and get a little bit more of these things. We'll try and get like mm, two stacks. We'll fortune them up and then we should be able to have all the dimensional shard ores that we need in order to make these worlds. But you know, the whole purpose of that really was to make ourselves a dimension that was flat. And it looks like by default, we got flat here. Some mod packs with that are, um, you know, sky black have all the world set to void by default. So I guess we got lucky that that isn't the case. So maybe we can just make ourselves a terrain modifier, put a, emerald block in front of it and then we should be able to make ourselves an emerald world that's something we're definitely gonna have to figure out but anyway uh looks like we're done here i'll go ahead and break this break that and then we'll move it collect a little bit more we'll be back guys all right guys so i went ahead and i mined up about a stack and a half of the dimensional shard ore and then i placed them all down with our diamond wand and fortune them with our unbreakable fortune pick so now we have a whole lot of dimensional shards, which is awesome. So what we need to do now was make ourselves an emerald dimlet. Doesn't seem easy, does it? Mm -mm. So in order to do such things, we have to make ourselves a workbench here, a dimlet workbench. So we need two crafting tables. We have those in auto craft. We'll just craft up two of those real quick. Perfect. And there we go. Dimlet workbench. Okay. So this does not require power. I'll just stick this right here, I guess. Dimlet workbench. Oh, no, I'm wrong. It looks like it does potentially require power. Um, let me grab conduits. Make sure we do that. I believe the power only comes into play when you're extracting dimlets, not just making new dimlets from parts. But anyway, uh, we'll just go ahead and do that. And then we need uh, facades to cover up those conduits. Perfect. Okay, I think we're good to go here. Right, so this thing is set up. So we want to make ourselves an emerald or uh, no block of emerald. This is the one we want. So that's already five. So we need all of these parts, including that material absorber right there in the lower right of this icon. So we need to get ourselves a material absorber. This guy. So that requires some wool, machine frame, cobblestone, dirt, and sand. A few different items here. We should be able to craft one of those up, no problem. And those do have EMC, so of course we will just go ahead and learn that so we never have to do that again. Hopefully, yeah, it says material absorber. All right, so that should be fine. So we have to feed this thing a certain amount of blocks, and I don't remember how many it is. Um, let me just go ahead and grab some emeralds. It'll only eat as many as that it needs to work. So let's also grab ourselves our wand again. Pretend we're Harry Potter or something real quick. <laughs> All right, so 
something like that we'll go up a few blocks and we'll bring this this way is that going to be enough i don't know so we'll put the material absorber right here and that should just nom them all it says it is 30 percent 50 percent i think we have too many here but it's not a big deal and done cool so now that thing has absorbed block of emerald so that is part of what we need to do yeah so we'll just go ahead and put all those away again all right so we have that so we need to get ourselves a rarity five let's do rf tools so we haven't really got many parts here so we have a dimlet basic energy module some of the control circuits and a basic memory thing so that's where these dimlet parcels come into play a lot so since we don't have the parts we're looking for and we have been collecting uh these dimlet parcels these are dropped from enderman very rarely i believe anyway you can just spam right click and it's happy fun time you get lots of these dimlet pieces that come out of there those are the only things you're gonna get though is just like different pieces of dimlets so very rarely you'll get the the memory type three the energy three the rarity five six etc etc so i'll just go ahead and spam open a few of these we'll put them into the me system man that bell sound though <laughs> we'll put them into the me system real quick and just see if we get the parts that we need let's go ahead and put all these away put away the rest of those parcels i might have to spam open those if we didn't get all the ones we needed okay so that was like what three stacks of those it's a pretty pretty good amount okay so we needed rf tools so we're looking for a rarity five dimlet control circuit rarity five i think we needed a um, advanced energy the one with the three lightning bolts mm, probably be better if we come over here and take a look at this thing directly so we search for block of emerald right okay so we need the three things we need the the ones with the three red dots and then whatever that other one i guess it's a material controller rf tools so we need one of these a dimlet advanced memory let's see we needed the one with the little thing this material type controller and then we needed the blink the base part that should be everything that we need i think we should be able to do that so if i double click it looks like we have all the parts ready it all goes over here and there is a material dim dimlet block of emerald awesome so the uh, I made the terrain dimlet flat. This says this affects the type of terrain that you will get in a dimension. This dimlet can receive liquid and material modifiers, which have to come in front of the terrain. So basically what that means, if we make ourselves a new dimlet, let's get the empty dimensional tab. We place this here and then we get ourselves a block of emerald plus this guy everything should be okay so we do emerald world click store now this says that it requires a hundred thousand rf per tick to keep it running that is a lot of power let's go ahead and do this and interrupt so we don't warp back to that other world then we also want to place this guy right here that's going to take a little bit of time for this thing to power up that requires a heck of a lot of power now, I don't think we'll be able to immediately go to this world uh, since it requires so much power. Remember, those conduits only do 999,999, right? Uh, that's per connection. So I think we might be able to add a second connection to this thing and make it work. So let me grab uh, some more of our ender conduit. I think if we do this and place that there it should be okay we're still not gaining power but this is using 400,000 rf per tick just to start up so yeah we're going to be dropping power for a little while this thing eventually will complete and i think we'll be able to maintain the cost yeah using this quantum entangle of porter anyway let's go ahead and wait for this thing to finish up and we'll see if we can get to an emerald world okay guys so this thing has finished powering up it's got full power our dimension builder is gaining power once again with the two connections that we put on there so everything seems like it should be fine and then just in case i made myself this phased field generator that we can now make now that we have the dimensional shards 
Okay, so we should be able to send this thing to Emerald World, dial it. Hopefully it's going to do what I want it to do and nothing crazy or weird is happening here. Nope, it looks like, ladies and gentlemen, we have emeralds for days. Let's just go ahead and poke all the way down. Okay, so it looks like the bottom few layers here. <laughs> Not so many emeralds. Let's also set this thing all the way up once again, 11 and then by 11. Oh my goodness. So I'm not sure why the bottom few layers of the world here have stone. I guess that's would be, uh, this would have been bedrock. Maybe that's what the flat bedrock does replaces what would have been bedrock with stone. But guys, this is all emeralds all the time. This is so much emerald. It's going to be absolutely disgusting. What we need to do now is get ourselves like a RF tools builder and start collecting all this stuff. Remember each one of these blocks of emeralds. Well, I was going to poke one and then show you each one of those blocks of emeralds is like what? Uh, 139,000 EMC. 147,000 EMC. This is so much EMC guys. It is absolutely ridiculous. This is going to be great. Guys, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. Apparently, I still have on my nerd glasses. Let's switch that over a little bit better. We're going to wrap the episode up here for today. We made ourselves an Emerald World. We basically have unlimited EMC now. Super, super awesome. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.